how to deal with, how to respond to bullies and not just like, oh, here's a couple of techniques and all that kind of BS. I'm going to give you word for word examples on what to say. Your kids are about to start school and I'm doing this entire live with zero profanity, hopefully to talk to you and maybe if you want to show this video to your kids about bullies and about the impact bullies have and where bullies actually come from. I want you to meet a few animals and there's two animals that I'd like you to meet first. And that, that is a chihuahua and a porcupine. And both of them have the potential to become bullies, but that doesn't mean they are bullies. So the first one is a chihuahua. This one acts out and postures and over exaggerates everything and screams and makes lots of loud noises to keep itself safe. So noise and action and lots of big posturing is a way that it keeps itself safe. A porcupine is different because it keeps itself safe when something becomes too close, too familiar or too close to the skin, the spikes come up and protect it. And those are two different animals, but they're both operating out of fear. Both of those defense mechanisms are operating out of fear. So those are fear mechanisms. A chihuahua, a person might grow up to become a chihuahua human because all of their life they might have been bullied in their younger years or they might be bullied by a, uh, a really bad parent, sadly that makes them grow up and want to just dominate everything around them. And if I'm just, if I can just become loud enough, that's going to make me safe. If I can just get loud and, and bark enough, I'll keep people away because they'll be scared to get close. And the porcupine might have had some childhood or young childhood regrets about being vulnerable around people. And they've made a subconscious permanent agreement that I'm going to just cause injury. I'm going to cause injury to anybody that gets close to me. With those two animals aside, I want to talk about why bullying actually happens. So number one, we're going to go through a few bullet points here. Number one is a loss of a feeling of control. And I'm not just talking about kids. I'm talking about adults too. When you see like the big a-hole driving on the on the freeway that's acting crazy, cutting people off, somewhere in that person's life, there's a feeling of a lack of control. We have personal injury. So they feel injured personally somewhere in their life. It probably has nothing to do with you, but that personal injury that they've maybe experienced at home or somewhere else in their life, if they can injure someone else, they kind of equalize the scale. They tend to view life as a scale. If I succeed, that means other people have to fail. If I'm the only reason other people are succeeding is because I'm failing. So the personal injury type of bullies are looking to make it equal. I want to equalize the situation to bring things back to normal. Next is a person wanting to make something feel more significant, wanting to make themselves feel more significant. So they feel insignificant most of their lives. And you can think of the childhood that this type of person has and the home life, not what you see at school. And keep in mind, we're talking about adults too, not what you see at work. They're feeling insignificant somewhere. So the moment that they start doing something that they're not going to think about at all, but you're going to be thinking about it all night and you're going to be worried about it all night they become significant in your lives. So they, they're injecting significance for themselves into your life. And that's one of the other types. The next type is a person that feels a little bit more insecure than you. So if, if you look a little bit more confident, more happy, more in, more in enjoyment, they need to even the scales a little bit. So they'll approach you and do something to even that feeling of security in the moment of being comfortable in your own skin. If you look super comfortable in your own skin, if they can just make you less comfortable in your own skin, they're evening these scales. So that's another one of the first uh, types of bullies that we talked about. And there's also something called folk ways. And if you've never studied psychology, you, you may never have heard of this, but a folk way is a social enforcement. Grownups even do this all the time. This is like if I walked out onto a beach wearing full winter clothing, people would look at me funny. 
and I would feel social judgment, which in my opinion is the number one fear of human beings. When we talk about a fear of public speaking and all that kind of stuff, all of that boils down to a fear of social judgment. So next, let's cover the next one, feeling small or vulnerable. They need to make someone else feel smaller because it instantly makes them feel like a success. Because in their mind, the only way they can be successful is to grow. And the only way to grow is to push other people down. So that's a different kind of bullet. And you'll be able to identify these pretty quickly when you start school or pretty quickly when you go back to work. And the final bully I wanna cover is shame. And this is the worst kind, the most sad of all, according to me. And if any of these resonate with you, type them into the comments so other people can see them if they're just tuning in. When we're talking about shame, this is a secret shame, a shame that the person is hiding from the rest of the world. And that makes us make fun of other people. And how does that work? If I can just make fun of this XYZ quality in someone else, that means I must not have it. So typically when we see someone doing this, especially in school, and you know what, at work too, in these Fortune 500 companies, you see the exact same thing. And these people who are making 600K a year, you see the exact same behavior. If they were like that in elementary school, there's a good chance they're like that when they're an adult. If I can just judge this or make fun of this in another human being, that means that I don't have it. There's a movie called What About Bob that goes into this in depth. Bob in the movie pretends like he's having a heart attack, pretends like he's having Tourette's syndrome, and the psychiatrist says, you know, what the hell are you doing? And he says, well, if I can fake it, that means I don't have it. And that's exactly what we're doing here. If I can judge it in someone else, that means I don't have it. So let's talk about this overall encompassing diagram of what composes a bully. There's four different types of bullies. We're going to go through them. And again, this is all just according to me. So the first one is loss. I have a fear of loss. The second one is I have a fear of being hurt. The third one is I have a secret shame that I'm putting onto someone else. And the final bully category here is a hidden or secret fear that's coming to the surface. So let's talk about how to deal with a bully. I'm going to give you some one liners here. You can choose to open a person more, open the bully more and socially opening or closing them down more. Those are the only two options you really have. And I would always default to de-escalation. There are very rare instances where a strong and sometimes drastic increase in escalation can solve the problem, but those are few and far between. So let's go through some one-liners to deal with bullies. I'm truly and very sorry for whoever hurt you. I'm very sorry that you got hurt, but it isn't me that makes you feel small. I can promise you. Does it make you feel bigger or just more accepted by people when you do this? And if any of these are great, type them in the comments here so other people can see them. Whoever hurt you, I promise it wasn't me. You know, we all have a lot going on back at home. And some of us, I guess, just take the pain to school and some don't. What's going on for you that you're turned into this person? I know that you're a lot nicer than this. You're a lot better person than this. No one's going to be hurt if you're just nice. And next, following on to this. Are you worried that you're going to be hurt if you're nice to people or kind to people? I can promise you all of these people will still think you're cool if you just be yourself. Am I the first person of the day that you did this to? I, I can promise you people will still think you're cool slash tough if you, if you just act normally. Did your parents teach you this or is there somebody who hurt you? I don't know who hurt you to make you act like this, but I promise that it wasn't me. And next one, this is one of my personal favorites. You really don't seem like the kind of person to lose control of yourself that easily. Is something wrong? And following on that one, 
You don't seem like the kind of person to hurt other people for no reason. Is there something going on? You really don't seem like the kind of person to act like a kindergartner. Something has to be wrong. And next, following up on the same trend, you really don't seem like the kind of person to behave like a child. Is something going on? Is there something wrong? I know that this is the part where you act like my question is awkward or pretend like it's weird that I'm asking so that people will laugh, but, and then fill in the blank from there. And now we're, we're in the process of pulling that behavior, whatever that person is doing, we're pulling that behavior to where everyone can inspect it. So if they're acting like really loud and obnoxious to be tough, we're going to compliment them on how tough they look to other people. So it looks ridiculous. So here's the next one. So I guess the next part of the script is when I say something and then you pretend like it's really awkward and weird. And I'm sure you won't do that because you don't, you know, copy what people do in the movies, but X, Y, Z, and then fill in the blank there. And next is, oh, I guess this is the part where I ask you a question and then you deflect it and act like it's extremely weird and then look at everyone to make sure they agree with you. That's a classic. When I ask you this question, this is the part where you act like it's awkward because you might be afraid to answer. The other thing that you'll do is probably laugh or make fun of the question. And these things are really common to do. So I'm sure you'll pick one that makes you look good, but and then fill in the blank there. Let's go to the next one. I'm sure when I ask this question, you'll pretend like it's really weird and awkward and maybe even do the thing from the movies where you laugh or act like it's stupid and then look around at everyone and make sure they agree with you. But and then fill in the blank there and I'll give you one more look and then say the person's name. Look and then say the person's name. There's a lot of people here who respect you and like you and I would feel weird too if high school kids were able to make me act mean to people and get just to get attention. And I can imagine there's a lot of pressure on you and it's Tuesday afternoon. We're about to have fifth period and you're here saying X, Y, Z. So right there, I'm just saying three things that are happening now. Three things that are happening now. I'm comp I'm, I'm using the person's name, complimenting them, three things that are happening now. And then I'm asking them to do something else. You can use whatever tone you like. You can say it however you like, but I want you to understand the origin of bullies. And I think it's better to teach empathy for people, for the bullies, instead of this is how you react to make them feel small, because that's what people decide to do. How can I make a bully feel small? And the moment you do that, the moment you want to make a bully feel bad, you become a bully. You want to be supportive. And I want you to critically understand the difference between a competitive and a collaborative mindset. A competitive mindset means I have to make sure no one's out to get me. A collaborative mindset means I want everyone to be good. I want everyone to feel great. I want everyone to succeed. That's the collaborative mindset. We want them to save face. We want them to start to realize what they're doing and we can't pull everything that they're doing out into the light without them having what's called an adverse reaction. We can't call them a bully because they might just decide to become even more of a bully right there. I, I pray and I hope that maybe uh, this will help your kids uh, this could potentially change the course of the future uh, for your kids and that this is helpful uh, to some of you guys. I appreciate it.